everyone and welcome to Cliterati Open Mic. My name is Nisha. I'm the social media manager at Harris Books and More at Harris Book and Harris Circle, which is the nonprofit programming arm of Harris Books. I'm going to pass the mic off to Teresa to introduce Cliterati for you tonight. Hello, hello, hello. Is that heard? Is that audible? Thumbs up if it is. I can't see your thumbs up because I'm not looking at the screen. But uh, I am Teresa Davis. Karen G is not here tonight. She is taking care of family business. So I'm going to hold it down because um, I can. Um, I've also been asked to do a couple of older poems that I haven't done in a while. So I'm going to um, be rehearsing on you. And um, you're a captive audience. So you're welcome. Um, so uh, I've been asked to do a demonstration of a two minute two, of two minute poems. So uh, I do poetry slam, and if those of you who don't know, poetry slam is competitive poetry. Uh, and the Women of the World Poetry Slam is coming up. Uh, I believe it is the end of next month. Next month, um, I believe it is in maybe Baltimore. Um, I will check that, and make sure I have it right later. But um, so I have two examples of two-minute poems, uh, and my, my two-minute poems are either, you're fine. I just hope the screen's not correct. Um, <laughs> the two-minute poem is, when I write them, they're either like super crazy intense or super wrong. Um, so we're going to start with this one. Um, I, I went on this thing, whenever I get writer's block, I, I, I will try to do like different types of prompts for myself. And for this one, I was like, I'm going to use the title of Journey and Steve Perry songs uh, to inform my poetry. So this poem is called Faithfully. Y'all know that song? Mm -hmm. You can do the lighter later if you want to. That'll be dope. <laughs> um, so this is Faithfully. Perfectly willing to rely on faith I offer my heart, scripted in the lines of this poem. It lives in my pocket so I can remember it all. I constantly reread it to diminish your reflection, douse the flames erupting when your eyes fix me, your eyes. Once lovely and inviting, now hollow points empty but deadly, constantly watching, judging my movement. This dance that lacks rhythm leaves me dizzy, seeking the truth in your blank stare, but I'm afraid to blink. For fear of becoming your target, lined up in your sight, the bullseye painted on my exposed heart and foolish me. I eagerly await your impact. The pain worth your pleasure. You love me like a natural disaster, leaving nothing in your wake except my devotion, a love manifest this label that, that has labeled me broken, and I do. I understand your tempestuous nature, but if it's true that murderers come back as the ones they've killed one day, You'll wear my face, this poem in your pocket, and the remnants of my heart clenched between your teeth faithfully. I know, right? It's not a love poem, it's something. Um, so uh, when I first came out, out uh, well, you know, yeah, um, I kind of broke out in rash straight women, and that's weird because there's no cream for that, but. <laughs> It don't stop them from being curious. And so um, this is after an encounter. Um, and and she sent me, this is back when MySpace was a thing. Who know about MySpace, Ooh. right? Okay. Right? Um, so she sent me a dissertation about um, how she thought she was going to hell um, because maybe she tricked me or maybe, I don't know, it was a lot. Um, but I used some of her dissertation to write her a poem. This is my two minute poem called, Because She Thinks She Is Going to Hell. Honey, you are not being judged because your bones decided, maybe in a moment unplanned to rest near my bones. Passion has no punishment except the ones we place upon our own hearts. I mean, we were runaway trains that night. I was wearing my voice just the right decibel. <laughs> you never stood a chance, besides. I understand those urges that make you question things like sexuality, like I want to know what this feels like and regret. It does not live in my heart. It simply can't afford the rent. And I am no testament 
No one takes advantage of me without my permission. So if your tongue is tied, my prayer is that your thoughts are not because I am drawn to all things beautiful. And believe it or not, baby, you were, you are beautiful. But I mean, we were a head-on collision that night. And well, I never saw you coming until I did. <laughs> Too many <problems. laughs> I'm going to do one more, um, uh, and then I am going to open this open mic list up. And this is, so I'm doing a series of workshops at the Arts Exchange. I do writing workshops there every second Saturday and virtually every fourth Wednesday if you're interested in participating. And this year, what I've decided to do is kind of do a, a take on um, pushing form poetry up against the Fraxis responses, which means you're responding to a piece of art, um, but try to respond to that piece of art in a form and then break the form. I believe in learning the rules and then breaking them ridiculously. Um, so this is started off as kind of a pantoon, but then it kind of changed it to something else. And this is called For the Lady. And I feel like, uh, you know, for Black History Month and for what is happening in our political world, uh, it's, it still, still holds up, and almost 20 years later, for the lady. You look so tired, so used up. Maybe you should step, sit down, forever poised in the act of stepping away from the chains that once held you, your arms full of lies as you beckon those you now wish to send away. You weren't built a liar from another land. You acquired it like debt. Forever poised in the act of stepping away from the chains that once held you, walking towards the abstract of freedom and idea with back doors, you weren't built a liar from another land. You acquired it like debt. You have become a symbol without true meaning, and you cannot shield your eyes. Walking away from the abstraction of freedom and idea with back doors, nothing here was ever free. But the cost of your restoration proved that. You become a symbol without true meaning and you cannot shield your eyes. You say nothing. Have you too adopted the stance of don't ask, don't tell? Nothing here was ever free. The cost of your restorations proved that. And the words of, on, if the words on your pedestal are removed, will you fall? You say nothing. You too have adopted the stance of don't ask, don't tell. Was your immigration a choice or like millions of slaves? Were you forced? And the word, if the words on your pedestal would, were removed, would you fall? Are Emma's words strong enough to keep you aloft? Was your immigration a choice or like millions of slaves were you forced? With your torchlight, do you still seek the poor, the tired, or is it a warning? Are Emma's words strong enough to keep you aloft? Can you feel the meaning of those words through the soles of your feet with your torchlight? Do you still seek the tired, the poor, the tired, or is it a warning? Stay away. The former slave owners have returned. Save yourself. Can you feel the meaning of those words through the soles of your feet? You have become the gift most unappreciated. Stay away. The former slave owners have returned. Save yourself. You look so tired, so used up. Maybe you should step or sit down. Mm. Thank you all for listening. Yeah. So the first thing was scratched out. Um, I'm going to maybe go down the list. Olivia, are you ready to share with us tonight? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Hey, come on down. Y'all give it up, Olivia. Is it your first time here? Yep. First time, y'all. Give up the applause. It's not my first time at the open mic. This is my first time performing. Yay. Um. <laughs> Okay. Um, so my first poem is called Lust for Summer. Um, okay. Hot raspberries seep down my throat and I swallow with fever. My hunger for sweetness as strong as the sun. Your red nose crackling now in the late June light, but we are still young. Our legs glossy on the grass with dew, sweat, and blood, thorns and cuts and raspberries blood. Cool mud cradles our heads and, your, and my throat is still at your stare. 
We are Gideon Young. Our feet are blistered and soiled from the fever of flailing through potato drills and pastures. Now the cradle of the berry bushes still offers us no shade from the sun. Flowers pepper the landscape, each a sun to the bees. Clusters of blue chicory and dots of blood red poppies run lawless now, not stopping at the throat of the stream. <clears throat> when you pick one for me, a fever rushes to my face, a gesture so young. We are drunk from the heat that makes fruit bubble and spoil young. I recall in the sun, this morning's fever. We ate blood, blood, we ate blood oranges on the porch, the potent citrus stinging my nose and throat. All I smell is you now and our berry stained hands now woven together, gentle and young. A knot forms in my throat as we survey the low sun spreading light like blood. Your eyes, as steady and sure as a fever, our, form, our foreheads meet a double fever, even more scorching now because your lips taste like the raspberry's blood from the bushes we plucked on gun, always young. Sweltering desire and dissipating sun falling into tonight's throat. Muggy lust ever fevers the young, even with the now buried sun, it's blood down the throat of summer. How long do I have? Okay, I, I have two more. Um, this one's called uh, The Dead Man's Tree. I climbed to the rot of the tree where the branches sagged, where the moss ran like mold. A sour scent on the leaves, it was the dew rain. That's what she called it. It was the tree my mother stole from the dead man. The floorboards, it was a bitter house, she was seven. She plucked it from the spider's web and raised it in the field. Now I know it's all bad, all full of the dead man of the dead house and the tree was never meant to be climbed, never meant to hold me a seed. My mother knew not that I would sprout rotten trees of my own from the splinters in my hands. She's seven again, she's searching the house. She's growing sharp roots like hair. And uh, this next one is called, They Say She's Crazy. Is this still working? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let mothers say how the old ghost can sign W-O-E. Tell father of her distress, and he cannot allow her tonight to disregard death. Would he care about mother now that he has gone mad? And the last one is called Beach Bubbles. Beach Bubbles, I told her, it wasn't real. Disney princesses, they'll break your heart. I said when you get to the crux of it, you'll never, knew, you'll never know it really mattered. I said, baby, baby, you know nothing. She called me honey, her hair was gray. The mind is a place too. A place? I knew not. I knew not the baby's hands wrinkles were gifts of wise eyes. Lights, yes, tears rip space. Spinning, spinning blasphemy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank, thank, thank you. Yeah, um, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, thinking about your first poem, it's like, we've been having some mm -hmm. awesome fake summer, right? Keep a jacket in your car. You live in Georgia. <laughs> Georgia don't know what she wants, except she might want us all to get sick. I don't know. Um, but yes, uh, thank you so much for sharing. And thank you for being first time here. Yay! That was Olivia, everybody. Um, I'm going to keep going. And next on the mic, we have Jill. Come on down. <laughs> It's been a crazy week. It's been a couple of crazy weeks, actually. I'm going to read, um, well, I might do four poems. There are so few people reading. Just some new stuff. This one is older. The rest of it's new. After grief, 
Here an apple red as legend, there a sky reflected in water. Someone missing, lost, something not quite right. And so you pick an apple near the apex of its tree, unlikely to fall into your hand, and sky strikes water, transforms it into another form of itself, and no one notices another leaf adrift, an apple tumbling. I just changed the pronouns in that from I to you. I think I like it better like this. Hi. <laughs> so this is a little mini poem. Um, it's not quite long enough to be a haiku. It's a true mini poem called Miniature Portrait. Tonight, her hair made quarter moons along her sepia cheek. Or do we call it a quarter poem? I don't call it, I just call it a mini poem. Oh, okay. so, I don't know that there's a, a word for a poem that's shorter than a haiku. Well, this one's a little longer, and this these last two are new poems. I was going to do a slam poem, but I just, hmm, I've done the same poems here over and over. I kind of hate to keep doing that. Maybe next time. February in Georgia. Today, the weather, like a woman laughing, rigging rattles in a breeze of music in winter beaches, traffic far in the background, a bass player riffing. Some days she's cold, raining, only occasionally storming and leveling everything in her path, the words one can't forget the scar of her anger lashing across the landscape. Some days so hot, nothing satisfies her. Marsh-edged pools that make up like shining memories of a past life. We should be chasing ups, rounding marks, shedding layers. We should be loving this day as though harsh weather were not darkening the brilliant winter sky. We should be the sky, reaching blue hands deep into space, reminding ourselves of return and retreat in these halcyon days of late Georgia winter, a small wind singing the tap-tapping cymbal as a boat waits to come alive in our hands while we dance down the path into the movement, to letting go every thought except being in and of weather like dust blown all the way from Egypt, like us meeting across sheets of light the rustle of wings and leaves stirring the dark. Today, light captures our senses. What color would you paint this, we say? What color in your palette says our names? Answered with glittering days of winter, the hot sweat of August shining on her skin, the inevitable passion of weather, wondering if it's storms or ice or wind, wondering where Hidden depths shelter perfect selves, shadowed and precious like a gift in bright paper and ribbons, held out on this day that passes, leaving its tracks on our faces, bold as time, brazen as spring, leaping onto a stage, breaking something like a heart. The blessing of late winter sunlight, whispering of summer nights. This is the last one. This is um, this is a weird poem. It, it went in a direction I didn't expect at all, and I still am not real sure what I said. So, <laughs> still, she says, "Be still, patient, and sitting, backed by a winter sun and early afternoon, a cloudless sky, deep blue as an endless movement of light, with barely a leaf shaking." Time has sifted rich red clay from silted water through sickly obscuration, a palette muddied, the cleaner green of a reservoir emerges, sunlight frosting everything through the slatted shade of a straw hat. The crunch of leaves delicately echo. Alpha, big as a child's pony, seems alone, but followed slowly as prey animals in acorns and late winter green shoots. For the ravine between houses crowded along the shore, like a whisper, 
body and blood, take this, eat, and a small cracker on the tongue, the deer feeding us for an entire winter. Language of separation, take this, my body, the wine, my blood, the gift of life, feeding the habit of death, eat and be satisfied. Nice. That was Jill. Ooh, shot. Okay. All right. Uh, B. Bernard, are you sharing with us? You ready? Do you need a chair or are you going to stand and play? Um, I think I can. Say again? I think I can get a chair. Okay. I will drag one up. Thank you. I got it. Yep. You might need to lower your camera, though. I think we'll be fine. Okay. So you don't need this, correct? Nothing. Yeah. Um, actually, I think I'll take one phone. Okay. Okay, the whole thing is moving. That's not right. Boom it. Nice. That would have been unfortunate. Mm. <laughs> okay. Anyway, there you go. Thank you. Oh, you do want to come first? Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have told you. That's me. No, no, you did. I was being extra helpful in all the wrong ways. <laughs> So this is just, um, I'm going to do one poem. A little closer. Um, this poem is called No More Roses. I started writing it like bit by bit every time I had like something to add on. Um, here it goes. No More Roses. I took my rose colored glasses off, but even though it hurt, I'm glad because it was worth it. I owed it to myself to see the truth untainted. Now I see what was real and what remains. Not pretty smells or bright pink florals. The rosebud from my childhood, all gray and withered. It's not how I remembered it. Doesn't mean I won't have flowers, just no more roses. It pains me to see my garden this way. How had I gone so long with it in shambles? Now, I tend to every broken branch, prune all the leaves. It'll be bigger, brighter this time, mm. with sunflowers, lilacs, and wisteria. Colors more realistic, less perfect. Mm. Shades with room to grow and change. Mm. So, no more roses. Mm. Nice. Mm. Woo! Why I get paid the big bucks. Thank <laughs> you. Um, this song is called The Rainbow Connection. Um, I don't know where it originally came from or who sang it first, but I heard it from the Muppets. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Why are there so many? Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, they're only illusions, but rainbows have nothing to hide. 
I'm grateful for all the insistence that life gets better towards the end. So I'll just hush quiet and keep my urges below the surface. Be calm, abiding, and shy, yet full of originality and purpose. Thanks for giving me the chance to be normal, fit your convenient mold. I appreciate not having to be me one less chore. I really have to say the lack of choice has me sold. The price of acceptance, my sense of self. Nice. Let me see. Sorry. I might just think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find a poem. I couldn't think of one last minute. of symptoms from CPTSD. That stands for Complex Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder, also known as relational attachment and can present as being a hoarder. Holding on to things because the original loss was too much to bear, dealing with the repercussions of a lack of care. It all comes from events that were anything less than nurturing, developmental stages that did not do justice to furthering a child's mental, physical, spiritual, emotional well-being, some rupture that separated them from what is truly freeing, which is knowing that there is a loving higher power even when events don't go as planned or turn sour. It's the process of recovering the true self, believing that somehow, some way, there is a road back to hell. 
to be happy, joyous, and free, a path to inherent goodness and purity. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you all so much for coming out tonight. I'm going to leave us with one last poem um, because uh, <laughs> Aaron's not here and I can't. Um, and also uh, because I, I, you know, I, I have not had a traditional um, relationship with publishing. Um, I, I got both my book deals by being impeccable with my words and being present in the moment and performing on a slam stage and a publisher happened to be in the audience and was like, I need to publish your book. Um, so that happened to me, same publisher twice uh, on the merit of a poem, right? And then, um, but this was the poem where I got my first book deal. And uh, it's one I've been asked to do a lot. I've been doing a lot of uh, love shows this month, who knows why. Um, so this is the first poem where I allowed myself to be completely vulnerable. And um, I'm, I'm really glad I gave myself permission to do that because it allowed me to get a book deal. And yeah, I love it. I love book deals where people don't tell me no. I like being told no about <laughs> certain things. I think a lot of us are like that. Um, so this poem is called Breathing Lessons. <clears throat> Who breathes? I breathe. Okay. You breathe? Okay. Yes, breathing is good. Keeps us alive. Shit. All right. Breathing lessons. I never heard the term love, lesbian, until graduation before my 30s. So I never knew in my college days that that's what they were calling me behind suppressed giggles and raised eyebrows. All I knew then was that she was beautiful. The first time our eyes met, she took my breath away, and I didn't know why I would find myself where she was, something across her path, avoiding eye contact, but always, always downstairs. The day she called me by name, my knees buckled visibly. She caught me by the arm, grinned me a disarming grin, and whispered in my ear, you know, if you breathe, you won't pass out. Her words buzzed through me like electricity, and for a week after that, whenever our eyes met, there was a mad blush and an intake of breath I could not release. She would sometimes scream across a crowded room, breathe! People thought she was crazy, but I thought proudly, yeah, she talking to me. The day she finally asked me out after a game, she, the baller, and me, believe it or not, holding pom-poms, I accepted greeting. Without thinking about this thing, I couldn't stop thinking about who was to my surroundings, the titters, the jeers. Hell, I figured if they wanted me to hear them, they'd speak up. Because I was much too busy trying to master this whole breathing thing. I didn't understand the pull she had on me, and at no time did it seem problematic. I once described the feelings to my mother draped in a lie where she became Lee and I was my friend. My mother's only comment that sounds like love. The first time she kissed me, I think I left my body. When I returned, she lay over me, stroking my cheek, reminding me, baby, breathe. I never told her that I loved her. I kind of freaked out when I heard my name and gay in the same sentence. I mean, it never occurred to me that a word used so frequently to diminish, shrouded in hate, laced with harsh tones to be used to describe what I shared with her. She once told me boldly, confidently, that she loved me, wanted to know if I loved her too, and in tears, I lied, no. Loving you could be problematic. Painfully, I watched her dissolve, and when she stormed from the room, she took the air with her, and I forgot to breathe. When I woke her, not on the floor where I fell, but placed lovingly on the bed where we shared our secret, she lay over me. A cool towel pressed to my head, a resuscitating kiss pressed to my lips, and Remind me again, baby, gotta remember, gotta breathe. And I watched her gather her things, preparing to walk out of my life. She gave me one last kiss that left me cold and parting words that burned. Loving you was never problematic for me and part of me. I want to find her now that I'm an adult and I know who the fuck I am. And I want to let her know that whole breathing thing. Hell, it's never been a problem since you left because no one has completely taken my breath away the way she did. And pardon me, 
wants to go back in time to the exact moment when that lie fell from my lips. I want to take it all back. I'm going to tell her what my heart now knows with all of me. Mm-hmm. Wants to thank her for being my first, possibly my only true love. And I want to let her know, baby, I've been practicing. And if I ever fall in love like that again, thanks to you, I will. I'll remember. And I'll believe. Mm-hmm. Thank you all so much for being here. You all, uh, we happen every third Thursday. If you uh, have a mind or know someone that you're like, you should totally do a reading here. Um, you can contact Karis and possibly get yourself a little reading here. I don't know. If you're up for it, hey, get froggy and jump. Let's do it. Um, also, uh, I run an open mic and uh, poetry slam every second Friday of the month at the Arts Exchange, which is in East Point. Uh, okay. If you are interested in coming and doing our short open mic before our slam or a writing workshop that I do every second Saturday over there, or if you want to come by this Saturday and let me whoop on you in some Scrabble, because mm-hmm. I got a Scrabble clip too, uh, I will I will totally do that for you. Hey, okay. um, so please find me on the Instagrams. Us, I am a she pirate poet on Instagram, and I am the literary director for the Arts Exchange. You can go to our website artsexchange.org and find out all of our amazing amazing events. Um, and thank you, Karis. Y'all give it up for Karis. <laughs> Um, and y'all have a great night, and we're about to be closed out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. You closed out well enough. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Y'all have a great night. Everybody be safe. Drink some water. We'll all be hydrated.